Y'all just come out when somebody comes to get you. Hallelujah. 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 Please, please don't think it's strange. I, I read something this week, and I, and I want to just share it with you. There's a lot of things about the Pentecostal culture that we just take for granted that guests are going to know when, in fact, they don't. What happened this morning as far as Brother Robbie and Brother Jared feeling like they need to talk to the Lord? Brother Billy, Amen. those that came to help, it, it's okay. This is okay. It happened in the Bible. Jesus is on his way to do a miracle at Jairus' house. His daughter's almost dead, Brother David. Jesus, you got to get there. But while he's on the way, this poor little old woman stops him. And the Bible said she touched the hem of his garment. And while Jesus was tarrying, the little girl died. Jesus said when he showed up, or he told Jairus, be not afraid, only believe. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Barnabas stopped him. The woman with the issue of blood stopped him. The leper, the man with the withered hand. And Jesus always stopped. He always stopped. Hallelujah. I have a little word to share with you this morning. 1 Samuel chapter 16. I guess it, it goes right along with what has happened here this morning. But we learned Friday night at the rally... And I've, ta I've actually taught it here before that altar calls are, you don't find directions for altar call in the Bible. Brother David, when the, when the early church preached, when, the, when it got into the heart, the people responded. Amen? We've got to get to the place, especially, especially when we have guests, we have people here that came here for a reason. They came here for a reason. And that reason's not us. And that reason's not for us to fulfill our agenda, but that reason is Jesus. It's Jesus. Now we do, we do know and we do preach that let everything be done decently and in order. But it's always decent and it's always in order for somebody to cry after the Lord. This lesson today, this message today, it's more preaching than it is teaching this morning, just going to be in lower gear. This lesson today is not just for the visitor or the sinner or the guest, but this lesson, this message today is for the church. And it came to pass when they were come that he, that Samuel, looked on Eliab and said, Samuel said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance. But the Lord, but the Lord... But the Lord looks on the heart. The Lord looks on the heart. Samuel's on a mission. He is on a mission to fix a mistake. Saul had been chosen as the first king of Israel, and that was a mistake. Saul could not stay humble. He became presumptuous, and his reign is now cursed the hand of the Lord has withdrawn from him and he is destined to fail. I don't know about you, but that grips my heart. I never want to get to the place where the Lord has to back away from me. 
I never want to get to the place uh, where I feel like that I have trampled the mercies of God beneath my feet uh, to the point that he'll turn me over to the devil that my soul might be saved. The Lord has told Samuel to go to Bethlehem. Go to Bethlehem to the house of Jesse and there you will find and anoint the next king of Israel. The Lord's exact words were, I have provided me a king among his sons. Notice he doesn't tell Samuel which son. He just tells Samuel where the next king is. He just tells Samuel where the one that he's picked out is. And I've got to let you know this morning, we have got to begin to get the heart of God, the heartbeat of God, and realize that there are many people that are walking the streets of this city, that they have already been chosen by God to do a great work for Him. There are men and women, boys and girls, are walking the streets of this city, that they've already been chosen by God. But because we still look at on the outside, we fail to see that God looks upon the heart. Brother Martin preached Friday night. We had 11 of our church people go, and I'm very, very grateful for that. I wish we would have had 111 of our church people go because I could not help but thank Sister Marie and Sister Carolyn when he was talking about, uh, oh, Lord, have mercy, when he was talking about being a 10, 11-year-old boy living in an unchurched home, and he would get up in the morning, uh, early on Saturday morning, to sneak and watch cartoons, Brother David, but then he would get up early on Sunday morning and sneak to watch the preaching on the TV because that's all the exposure that he had and he would as the preacher would say if you've got a need put your hand on the TV and that little boy would walk over and put his hand on top of the television just seeking and searching he said I didn't really feel anything but there was something inside of me that was drawing me and I could not help but think how many are among us how many do we walk by in the grocery store that are still waking up in the morning with a long with a gnawing, with a searching in their spirit. And we have the answer. How many? Two years before he was ever brought to church, Brother Billy, he was putting his little hand on the television set, seeking, seeking for something from God. As Eliab, the oldest son of Jesse, approaches Samuel, Samuel thinks in his heart, this is the one. That has got to be him. Surely, this is the anointed one. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't look at his countenance. That's his face or his, his appearance. Don't look upon how big he is or how, how fit he may look. Notice this. Because the Bible says... Because I have refused him. Now that tells me that the Lord also considered Eliab. Y'all hang with me a little bit. I won't keep you long this morning. I might tonight, but not this morning. Well, I'll just keep you a while this morning then. That sounds like that's all right with me, with y'all. It appears, Brother Rice, that the Lord also looked at Eliab. But he said, I want you to please hear me this morning. Please hear me. Please hear me. But the Lord said, I have refused him. Why was he refused? Why did the Lord refuse Eliab? He's good looking. He's big. But we know now, Brother Pete, that the Lord looks on the heart. So the Lord's not looking at his physical qualifications. The Lord is looking at what's on the inside. He was refused because of the condition of his heart. For the Lord doesn't see as man sees. Man does look on the outward appearance. Remember the old saying, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And it's how you look. But God looks on the heart. 
So when I seek after the Lord and I study and I pray and I find a a passage of Scripture or a few passages of Scripture that will compile the message for me to minister today to the group of people that are under the sound of my voice. When I begin to minister from the Word of God, inspired and anointed by God, I am in fact not ministering to the faces that I see, but I'm ministering to the heart. Come on, y'all don't be distracted. Y'all stay with me. Y'all stay with me. I got to start being real. Too much of this stuff I'm teaching and sharing. People, so I said things in here that people didn't even realize I said. Got to, got to pay attention. I'll, I'm going to shorten it up. I'm going to shorten it up. But Brother Dole, I came to minister to the heart. And if I'm not careful, I'll minister to the face. And I'll get discouraged by what I see on the face. And I will miss out on what God has desired to say to the heart. We cannot always go by appearances. We cannot always make judgments. We can never, when speaking from a heavenly perspective, make judgments based upon what we see. And I just got to be bold and blunt. We're terrible about it. I'm terrible about it. But till the Lord begin to minister to me, Brother Rice, and tie it coupled with the sermon, Sister Eloise, that we heard Friday night, I have got to begin to live with the heart of Jesus Christ. I have got to let the Holy Ghost minister to my heart in order that I may be able to see as he does. The Bible says in Proverbs, as we think in our heart, so are we. The mission of the Spirit is to speak to the heart in such a manner that the body will submit to what the heart really wants. How many of you have ever been somewhere? Visiting a house. Thirsty. Maybe hungry. And the host will say, Would you like something to drink? Can I get you something to eat? And your first reaction be, Nah, I'm good. Oh, I'm all right. Now, first thing, let me just be a little blunt with you. That, in a manner of speaking, is a lie. Because I really like one. So, So my heart is saying, yes. But my mouth is saying, no. Why? Why? All kinds of different reasons. None of which make any sense. All sorts of reasons. Why that I will feel something in my heart. And in the back of my mind, no, oh. And my mouth say no. That's what I'm talking about when you come into the house of the Lord. Now, y'all keep looking at me. Every mama that gets up and everybody that gets up, the whole congregation follows them out like they grow four heads or something while they were sitting there. I got to be able to minister to the heart, Brother Rice, because it's the heart. Why do I need to minister to the heart, Brother David? It's because that's what I'm really ministering with the real person, with real desires, with real wants, with real needs. ministering to the heart because that's where God's looking. That's where God's looking. And when we preach over this sacred desk, we are in effect saying what the Spirit says to the church. And the Spirit is speaking to your heart. And if you are in the, in the, under the sound of my voice this morning, 
There is a part of your heart uh, that has a longing, that has something missing, uh, that has something uh, that's lacking in your body, in your mind, in your life, in your complete existence. Uh, there's something missing. You say, well, I don't know. If you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, I come to tell you tonight uh, there's something missing in your life. Uh, I don't care how good it is. Uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, will make it better. Uh, I don't care how blessed you feel. The baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, will will bless you beyond your wildest dreams. There's a relationship with God that the Bible tells us that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. There is an assuredness of an eternity in heaven with the Lord. And our heart is screaming. Our heart is yearning. Our heart is stretching to have what the Lord wants for us, but our mouth says, I'm good. I'm good. The reason why the Lord looks on the heart is that's the real you. Not the picture that you try to present, but the real person that's there. Understand this. The Lord is not interested in playing games. He is interested in dealing with the real person. He is building a church. Somebody say, God's building a church. And it's a church that the gates of hell will not prevail against. He is not looking to fill his church with a bunch of wimps. But he's looking to fill his church with men, women, boys, and girls that can be honest with themselves and say, above everything in this world, i got to have you in my life. He's building a church. He's looking and searching for folks with the right heart. God forbid that he'll look over this congregation today and look into somebody's heart and refuse them. No, let me just get real with you. Brother Billy, there are going to be some in the church. Don't, don't get nervous because I'm just in the Bible. The Lord told me, leave them alone. Let them stay. I'll do the weeding out in the end. Is that not what the Bible says? Just let the tares go. They will grow up with, oh, I'm in the Holy Ghost this morning. They will grow up with the wheat. You just let them alone. And in the last day, I'll separate them. Because we cannot be, we cannot be so naive to think that everybody's heart stays in the right place because there's people that don't pray. There's people that don't fast. There's people that are not faithful to the house of God. There are many indicators that say the heart is not in the right place. But there are those among us that I see the Holy Ghost on you. I see your desire painted all over your face. The hunger to be in the presence of the Lord. And let me tell you something. I don't care if you've taken that step or not. Uh, you got the right heart. Your heart is in the right place. The Lord's looking at your heart. And it's the Lord drawing you. It's the Lord compelling you. The Lord cannot be fooled. You cannot trick the Lord. He cannot be deceived. He knows the end from the beginning. He created us. His word is in fact a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of our heart. If you're in this church today, it is your heart that I desire to minister to. It is the real you. It is your heart. Why do I need to deal with your heart? Because it is your heart that the Lord has spoken to. It is the yearning in your heart that has drawn you to the house of God. Pride, fear, peer pressure. There are many things that combine to war against what our heart knows to be true. Take comfort in knowing that God knows your heart. That in fact, you hear me right now, that in fact, the desire that you have in your heart, whether you're living for God or not, 
The desire that you have in your heart has been placed there by God. It has been placed there by God. Cornelius, a Roman centurion, over a hundred men. He resided in Caesarea, which was the capital of Herod. It was where the army was headquartered at, the Roman army. They were a pagan, polytheistic God that in fact they worshipped themselves more than they worshipped God, Brother Billy, because they were so caught up in how they thought and so caught up in their wisdom, Brother David, and, and in their knowledge uh, that, that they were an elite. It was the Roman Empire, and everybody knows the sun never set on the Roman Empire. They were braggadocious. They were arrogant. They, they, they were the oppressors of Israel. If Israel wanted to do anything, they had to ask Rome if they could. Cornelius worked for the Roman government. But Brother Billy, come on, saints of God, y'all stay with me a little bit this morning. You got to see this picture. Cornelius was of the governorship. He was of Caesar. He was of the Romans. But the Bible tells us that he was a devout man that feared God with all of his house, gave much alms to the people, and prayed to God always. Now, the Bible does not tell us Cornelius' religious background. But it does tell us, Brother Terry, that he has been exposed to some people who worship a God that even Roman oppression couldn't take away their faith in him. Something has happened, Brother Billy, to spark something in the heart of Cornelius. Uh, not just, oh, you come on, you stay with me right now. He's not just curious, Brother Rice. He's not just visiting church once in a while. But he has prayed so much to God. Give away so much money. So please don't think that don't matter because it does. And feared God so much that he has intruded into the presence of the Lord with a memorial. Let me just establish something right now. Cornelius was not saved. He was not saved. Oh, I got to encourage somebody right now. Please, and those of us that were born with the Holy Ghost, don't tar and feather me. You don't even have to be saved to have a right heart with God. Because Cornelius had a right heart with God. How do we know that? Because he was pursuing him. He was after what God had for him. The, the gods of Roman mythology, they didn't do it for him. And the people of God, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost right now, the people of God had so ministered to him that it aroused a hunger in his heart that he began to give away so much money and pray so much that the Lord had to send an angel into his house. Remember, he said, I'm building a church on the rock. I need people that's got the right heart. Because let me tell you something. Attending church don't make you part of the church. Now, attending church, if you're looking for something to soothe your conscience by attending church, it ain't going to happen. You're just going to get hungrier. But the Lord sent an angel to Cornelius' house and said, I've been looking at your heart. Come on, stay with me now. I've been looking at your heart. There's a fella in Joppa. His name is Simon Peter. He's staying at Simon the Tanner's house. 
You're looking for Simon Peter, not Simon the Tanner. I just noticed that, Brother Billy. That was very important. That was very important. He got the right Simon. But notice this. Notice this. He sends some guys for Peter, and he's going to come and tell you what to do. Now, we've got, to, we've got to get that in our minds right now. He prayed so much and gave so much that an angel came down from heaven into his house. He saw an angel. I ain't never seen one that I know of. And the Lord's already working on Peter. Absolutely. Brother Peter, I ain't never seen an angel. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. I feel very strongly in my heart, very assured, Brother Dole, that if the trumpet sounds today, I'm going to meet the Lord. But I ain't never seen an angel. He was a good man. He was a faithful man. But the angel said, Peter will tell you what you ought to do. Now, a messed up heart would say, what do you mean tell me what I got to do? How much money you been giving to the poor? How much prayer you been offering up? Let me tell you about me praying. Stay with me right now. Let me tell you how much I pray. I fast two times a week. I pray three hours a day. Morning, noon, and night. No. A right heart immediately got on the phone and said, number one servant and number two servant, front and center. Soldier, front and center. Here's where you're going. You're going to Joppa. You're going after Simon the Peter. Simon Peter who's at Simon the Tanner's house, and he lives by the seaside. Cornelius immediately did what the Lord spoke into his heart. Immediately. Because if the Lord said there's more, if you've got the right heart, you want it. The right heart. Cornelius. So, while they're on their way and they're just about to get there. Oh, by the way, I got to tell you this. Cornelius was praying at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when the angel came down. The next day, they're on their way to Joppa, Brother Pete. And guess what? It just so happens that Peter is in prayer. At dinner time, at noon time, Peter's on the rooftop in prayer. Okay, I told you I was speaking to the saints and to the guests, to the, the Holy Ghost field and those that don't have it. Because you see, the Lord has still got to work on my heart. Brother Dole, I haven't arrived yet. There's some things the Lord's got to teach me, Brother Pete, some things the Lord's got to, got to show me that I cannot look on the outward appearance. Because if I am, I don't have the mind of God. But Peter is on top of the house. And there come this great big sheet out of heaven. Great big old sheet looking thing. Tied together. Kind of like a, a do-rag. That's how I'm picturing it. All four corners kind of knotted together. And it's filled with all manner of four-footed beasts. Filled with all manner of... Uh, fowl of the air, all manner of creeping things. And the Lord spoke to the heart of Peter and said, rise, kill, and eat. Peter said, now I want you to see something here. My God, help me right now. Same Lord, same voice, given a direction. Cornelius is given a direction, and he says, yes, sir, get over there now. Let's do it now. I want them here now. Peter says, the Lord said, rise, kill, and eat. Peter said, nope. Not so, Lord. 
Now, Brother Billy, we got to understand something here. Peter's heart was not wrong. If his heart had been wrong, Brother Robbie, if his heart had been wrong, the Lord wouldn't have been messing with him anyway. But his heart was right. He was an evangelist. He was Holy Ghost filled. There's been a change take place in him. But he's seeing with the wrong eyes. And the Lord said, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common or unclean. Then the Bible said it was repeated three times and then the sheet was drawn back up into heaven. I'm about done. Then the Bible says they come to the door while Peter doubted what that meant. Here's what happened. Brother Pete, he realized what it meant, but that can't be. He realized what it meant, but that can't be. Just like this morning. Now, let me tell you something. You feel like coming to praise the Lord? You come on down here and praise Him. I may not always stop church so we can all gather around you because that's our tradition. The tradition of the Lord is we worship with you. Not that we stand around and watch. Hallelujah, brother. Huh? Our tradition says we just all go gather around them. Pray a little bit. The way we should do it is rejoice together. That didn't go over all that great. Because we like gathering around and shaking on people. I knew what he was doing this morning. I also knew what Jared was doing this morning. I'm just going to go on and rejoice with him. Jared's got some things he needs to work out. Brother Robbie's got some things he needs to work out. But right now, we're just going to thank the Lord. Our tradition says we got to wait till the right time to do it. We got to do it in the right way. But the Lord looks on the heart. He don't look on the outward man. Now, I'm not saying I just want us to go nuts. Okay, you understand that? I'm not just saying that I, that I want people to, you know, start bringing their Happy Meal and spreading it out for them and just getting so comfortable that they, if I feel like doing it, no, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is let's get tapped into what the Holy Ghost wants. Amen. And what does the Holy Ghost want above everything? Is everybody that's in this place that is not filled with the Spirit to be filled when they leave here? That's what the Lord wants. And the Lord is searching, Brother McKinney, he's searching the heart to find out who he can fill with the Holy Ghost. That's what he died for. That's what he gave us the Holy Ghost for, is to be able to encourage people to be able to be. Now, there are those among us that in your heart, oh, I'm going to meddle. My God, have mercy, I'm about to meddle. There, in your heart, you're drawn to the power of God. You're drawn. Is let's get tapped into what the Holy Ghost wants. And what does the Holy Ghost want above everything? Bible thick book of list of reasons why that you can't. The Lord is just looking for somebody that will let their heart speak for them. The Lord is looking for somebody. The Lord is looking for somebody. Say, we've got to see this. The Lord was looking for somebody to open up the gospel to the all the world. Because up till now, all it's had is Jews and Samaritans, which is half-breed Jews. Nobody that was just completely out of the bloodline has ever been filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord didn't have to search very far to find somebody. Let's stand. Brother Billy's looking for people to, to compile the church that's built on the rock. 
Where's your heart at? What is your heart saying? The Lord's drawing. What we feel in here right now is not the spirit of the Lord taking a coffee break. It's not the spirit of the Lord saying, well, I've already touched them, I've got to move on. What we feel right now is in fact us looking through eyes of the flesh instead of eyes of the spirit. Huh? We have our routines, we have our plans, we have our traditions, and they mean the world to us. I told you all, be ready. Be ready for people that don't look like us to come to the house of God. Be ready for people that don't have the same cultural background as we do to come to the house of God. Be ready for people of every tribe, nation, tongue, creed, origin to come into the house of God because they're coming. Because the Lord is drawing them. The Lord is drawing them. The Lord is drawing them. Just like he's drawn many that are in here this morning. Just like told Brother Mark and Brother Greg, I went and met with them. I told this Wednesday night, if you didn't come to church Wednesday night, we baptized both of them in Jesus' name. I went to their house to visit them, Brother Billy. They told me that they've been seeking, searching the scriptures and seeking for God for over a year, Brother Rice. Just looking. How many more houses are like that in New Madrid? You think they're the only ones? Nah. Nah. There's some among us this morning. That your heart has said, I want that. I want that. Let me tell you how to respond to what your heart says. Repent. You want to know how to repent? You repent by telling the Lord, I'm sorry for everything I've ever done in my life. And really being sorry. That life ain't giving me nothing but heartache, despair, sadness. And turn around and go toward Jesus. You go toward the Lord. Once you've fully repented of your sins, you just begin to praise the Lord. God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. If he don't get you filled right then, we'll baptize you in Jesus' name and you come up out of the water filled with the Holy Ghost.